I just wanted to say to you by way of uh, introductory remarks, in my quest to try and make you understand the level of my um, unhappiness, I'm likely to use an awful lot of what we would call violent sexual imagery. And I just wanted to check that uh, neither of you would be terribly offended by that. Hello, Malcolm. Oh, you look a bit tired. Yeah, you're looking competent. The guys, I fucking despise the guy, you know. I despise him as much as fucking James May presumably despises himself. I won't scare you, okay? I'll just explain to you what I'm gonna fucking do to you. I'm gonna take your bollocks, I'm gonna fucking rip them off, I'm gonna fucking put eyeballs on them. And I'm gonna stitch them onto a fucking sock and use that as our mouthpiece. And I would rain down upon you so hard that you'd have to be reassembled by fucking air crash investigators. This aubergine, it's cooked in ghee. Oh, I fucking love ghee, it's like fucking free base and butter. Should we get Ben? Oh, he'll be back. Like the ship Terminator. There he is. Do you know, Malcolm, uh, the best way to clear a paper jam? I don't know. Kill a kid an hour until it sorts itself out. <laughs> Did you actually buy me flowers, Malcolm? No, no, no. It's one of the many advantages of living close to an accident black spot. Department of Social Affairs, Department of fucking shocking, shitty, charlatan, Shit! That's where feet off the furniture, you Oxbridge twat. You know, a punt now. Darling, I wouldn't fucking piss on you if you were fucking allergic to piss, right? No. Come on, people, let's oh, get going here. Money. I've got a to do list here that's longer than a fucking Leonard Cohen song. Would you like some coffee? Fuck off. Tea? You fuck off, darling. More comfortable for Yeah, months. well, I'll just have to kill the both of you then, won't I? Yeah, well. That's a joke, by the way, not yeah. a very nice one, a nasty one, which masks a lot of very negative feelings about this fucking department. Oh, hey, Yoko Ono and the two remaining Beatles piss off. It's a fucking lockdown right oh, now. Come off Save it. We're Malcolm. not in a prison drama, are we? We are in a prison drama. This is the fucking Shawshank Redemption, right? But with more tunneling through shit and no fucking redemption. Never mind your fucking toys. Play with that. Go and stand in that fucking corner. Stand over there, right? And do not move or I will perform a fucking living fucking autopsy on you with a fucking rusty speed and I'll have your kidneys for fucking cufflinks. Lovely. How are you doing? I'm bitching, yes. I'm as busy as a two-twatted hooker. I'm afraid I turned it down, Malcolm. You know that 90% of household dust's made of dead human skin? That's what you are. To me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm back. I'm sorry I left my sombrero at home, but here I am. What do you think of the tan, eh? Huh? What do you think of this shade? I call it custard cancer. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You are now being scrutinised for what you wear, what you say. For your hair, your shoes, your fucking earrings, your fucking cleavage and your dress, which, by the way, is way too loud. Too loud? Yeah, I'm getting fucking tinnitus here. These phones are amazing, aren't they? I've got an application here that can throw grenades into people's dreams. Do you know what they think about you? Oh, I'm sure you're going to tell me, Malcolm. But I'll, I'll tell you exactly what people say about you. Oh, all right, go on then. Fuck all! Oh, do they? Fuck all! People have got no fucking opinion about you. You're like fucking Special K or fucking the Moody Blues. Then you get in your car and you just fucking drive about and I go and do some sightseeing, you know, or attach a hosepipe to the exhaust, whatever. And obviously, if you do think about running with this pill story, yeah. I will personally fucking eviscerate you, right? Right. And I mean, I don't have your education, I don't know what that means, but I will start by ripping your cock off and I'll bust it from there, OK? Good. Thank you. Again, talk to you later. Cheers. Bye-bye now. OK, people. Wake up and smell the cock! Hello, Philip Schofield. I fuck lobsters for money. The Prime Minister is the right man for the moment. Yeah, that's what you told me to say. Of the moment, of the moment. I told you to say of the fucking moment. There's a huge difference between me saying to you, Nicola, I would like to go for a lovely walk with you. And Nicola, I would like to make a hat out of your fucking entrails. This is no good for fucking pacing. Which is for the best because I'm gonna need all of my fucking energy to fucking rip all of your bodies to bits with my bare hands and sell off, yes, yeah, sell off your fucking flayed skin as a sleeping bag to a fucking normal person. You know what you are? You're a fucking human dartboard. And Eric fucking Bristol's on the hockey, flinging a million darts made of human shit right at you. Can you take that? 
Can you? Just saying, I'll gladly lend you a hand if you feel the need to keep your head down. I don't need to keep my head down because unlike yourself, I don't give blowjobs to truckers. <laughs> give me a second while I look up my little file of things I really don't give a fuck about. And here we have, under the letter N, we've got nail bombing golf clubs, there is uh, the National Trust, there is Newcastle, Nicola Murray. Yes, she's still there. I think we should use the carrot and stick approach, yeah. You take a carrot, you stick it up his fucking ass, followed by the stick, followed by an even bigger, rougher carrot. You breathe a word of this to anyone, you mincing fucking cunt! And I will tear your fucking skin off. I will wear it to your mother's birthday party and I will rub your nuts up and down her leg whilst whistling Bohemian fucking Rhapsody, right? Yeah. No. Get out of my fucking sight. Yeah. Oh, your chair. Oh, God, yeah. It's cool, isn't it? It's, it's got um, lumbar support. Bennett, people don't like their politicians to be comfortable. They don't like that you're having expenses. They don't like you being paid. They'd rather you lived in a fucking cave. Not a fucking massive vibrating throne. And get some fucking energy going yeah. in here. I don't care whether you inject yourself with stem cells or put cocaine in your fucking fruit corners. Just get on with something. Malcolm's calling. I thought he was supposed to be sluicing sand out of Tom's thong in Ibiza or wherever they've got to. He is. He's away. He's in Spain. Just to ignore, ignore Malcolm. Ignore Malcolm? Yeah. What can he do? Ollie, mate. Ollie, you're not answering your phone and I'm getting really, really worried that you'll fight yourself. Yes, I just keep getting these terrible images flashing in my head, you know. Have you been stabbed repeatedly in the face? Or have you in a coma on a life support machine? Dreaming about being a gay policeman in the 1970s. Malcolm, I can explain. Ollie, thank God that you're safe. Uh, sorry. That's from me, car careful. <laughs> Where did you go? I went to um, Easter Island. I thought I'd spend my time there re-chiselling all the statues so that they looked like Westlife. I think that you and I need to have a little talk. A proper talk. Like when Mummy explains why Daddy's going to be in the papers tomorrow. Out. Well, you know what, Howard? She's not bent, either in the sense of being corrupt or being gay. And by the way, that's an incredibly homophobic headline, you massive poof. It's time for you to step up, Ollie. What's that film that you love? What film? The one about the fucking hairdresser, the space hairdresser and the cowboy. The guy's, he's got a tinfoil pal and a pedal bin. His father's a robot and he's fucking fucked his sister. Lego. They're all made of fucking Lego. Star Wars. That's the one, right. It's like that, OK? I'm gonna fucking kill all the bad guys. And you'll be able to blow up the big the Death Star, the Death Star yeah. thing. Yes. Then you can go and live happily ever after on the planet of the teddy bears. Yeah, there he walks, there he walks. It's a fantastic analogy. Well done. I... What happens if he does stand a chance, eh? He'll fuck you harder than Ron Jeremy, and with less warmth. Right, uh, Jamie, look, I just have to say at this point that I do find him just a little bit frightening. Relax! He has never hit anyone. Or at least anyone he has hit has never had the balls to take it to a superior. This could be from anyone.